Hello Bethanians, welcome once again to Bethany Virtual Cafe. This Sunday, we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. And uh, before we begin with our reflection, I'd like to uh, make a special greeting to the youngest member of our family, Gaylord Prado, on his uh, birthday. So wishing you all the best and uh, more birthdays to come. This Sunday, as we begin, with our reflection, I'd like to narrate a beautiful story written in a book that could speak about a modern-day Good Samaritan. So if we're looking for what a true and a Good Samaritan is today, then this could be one of those inspiring stories. And I begin. In the book Profiles in Character, Congresswoman Barbara Cubin from Wyoming tells how her character was shaped by the moral influence of her parents. Barbara's parents divorced when she was young. A few years later, Barbara's mother remarried. Her new stepfather worked hard to support the family. One particular story demonstrates his great character. Barbara's birth father on a visit to Wyoming was beaten and robbed. At the hospital, a paramedic found his former wife's phone number on Barbara's birth father and called the house. Barbara's stepfather went immediately to the hospital and paid his wife's ex-husband's hospital bill. Then it took him to a local motel. The stepfather paid the proprietor of the motel for the father's room and meals until he had recovered enough to go home. So speaking of a good Samaritan, this truly concretizes what Jesus described in the gospel as our neighbor, the good Samaritan. So this Sunday, it would be wonderful for us to reflect on the Good Samaritan and to see and ask ourselves first who our neighbor is and at the same time ask ourselves how we could also become a Good Samaritan. Let me point out three points this Sunday. First, let us always remember that the road from Jerusalem to Jericho passes right through our home, parish, school, and workplace. So what is this trying to tell us? What it's trying to tell us is that along the way in our journey, we could come across anybody. We could come across, in fact, our neighbors. Our neighbors who could be coming from a different belief, a different gender, a different color, different age group, etc. And it is a re reality to face. Wherever we go, whatever we do each day, there will always be an opportunity. There will always be an encounter. And what's important, according to Jesus, especially if we follow him as his disciples, is how we make ourselves ready to respond, to inspire, to help, and to make sure that in that encounter, something good happens, something loving happens, something that is truly motivated by what is within us, something that is motivated clearly, first and foremost, by the love of God. So that's number one. Whatever happens to us each day, let us always remember that uh, in our journey from Jerusalem to Jericho, there will always be somebody whom we could encounter somebody who could possibly be our neighbor.
Number two, we have to always check to see if we are good neighbors. It is always wonderful for us to assess how we treat our brothers and sisters, how we treat people in certain circumstances as we encounter them, and uh, how best we exercise our Christianity so much so that we practice them, especially to a neighbor in need, in generosity, in kindness, as well as in mercy. Because who knows? A cheerful greeting, for example, kind words, a kind gesture, any kind gesture could do so much, especially to a suffering heart. And uh, when we give them or treat them with kindness, it could change the mood. It could change the way they see life. It could change their emotions. It could change their suffering, their pain and hurts. Because of a simple gesture of kindness, because of a cheerful smile, because of the little things that uh, we could uh, give to our brothers and sisters in need. And finally, let us always allow ourselves to be touched by good Samaritans. Let their kindness, their goodness, their example be an ongoing inspiration to all of us. So that as we are inspired by their goodness, their kindness, we too are moved in a special way to do the same. You know, at times, I meet up and encounter friends. I meet up and encounter people who are uh, special in my life. And whenever that happens, the little gesture or the little conversation that we have could help us, strengthen us, inspire us in a special way. And just as they share uh, moments and experiences of kindness and being a good Samaritan to their brothers and sisters by uh, treating, for example, a person who is rude, by treating them in kindness instead of retaliation, or by simply praying for them and uh, asking the Lord to help them because they may be suffering in their own way. And their rudeness, their hatred, their anger could be brought about by certain deep-seated pain that they're also experiencing in their lives. And so when that happens, whenever we are in a conversation, I'm always moved and also reminded to become kind also to other people. I'm also reminded to exert effort in order to show kindness and generosity to other people. Because that little cheerfulness, that little acts of kindness could bring a lot of uh, good things, especially to the recipient, to someone who are deeply in need of the cheerfulness, generosity, and kindness in their lives. Now, let me relate this story about Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen another true story. In his autobiography, Treasure in Clay recounts a visit he made to a leper colony in Buluba, Africa. He intended to give a silver crucifix to each of the 500 lepers residing in Buluba. The first person who came forward, however, was a man so disfigured by the ravages of leprosy that Sheen was repulsed by the sight. And I think we could relate to this, though today leprosy is curable, but had we probably seen people who have suffered from leprosy, it would be difficult for us to even look at them because of their figure or their face, or the way that leprosy has affected them physically. And so, the man's left arm was eaten off at the elbow by the disease. 
So he extended his right hand. This hand too was unspeakably corrupted by this awful disease. Unable to bear the leprous presence, Sheen held the crucifix above the man's palms and dropped it, where it was immediately swallowed up in the decaying flesh. Instantly, Sheen was aware of his unrighteous act. He had taken the crucifix, God's sign of identification with humanity, and refused to associate himself with one of God's children, a neighbor. So here, he's being challenged to become a good Samaritan. And so overcome with remorse, Sheen dug his fingers into the man's leprosy and removed the crucifix. This time, he gently placed the crucifix in the man's hand. Sheen respectfully handed a, a crucifix to each of the remaining 499 or 499 lepers, and in exchange, learned to love them with the love of the good Samaritan. Well, for sure, Archbishop Fulton Sheen knows who his neighbors are, knows who the Good Samaritan is, as he is well adept with scripture. But of course, here is an opportunity for him to do the same as what a Good Samaritan would do. And probably inspired by the thought and by the story of the Good Samaritan, he allowed that story to inspire him to change his outlook in life and to change the way he sees his neighbor. Not with disgust, but rather with kindness and with love and mercy. So Bethanians, this Sunday, as we continue with the ordinary time, Another mark of discipleship is being taught by Jesus to all of us. A mark of discipleship that is wrapped up in the qualities of what a good Samaritan is. A good Samaritan is someone who is generous, someone who is kind, someone who is compassionate, someone who is merciful. May we too, this Sunday, become a true and a good Samaritan to each and every people we meet, to each and every people we encounter in life. May these people, those stranger as they may be, become truly be neighbors as Jesus described in scripture. And in doing so, we can become truly a good Samaritan to each one of us. God bless us all, Bethanians. For our symbol and image this Sunday, let us focus on the Good Samaritan. Actually, the word or the term Good Samaritan is quite ironic or is quite paradoxical in its own way. Why? Because first, uh, to refer to a group of people, the Samaritans, hated by the Jews, and to refer them as good is something that's a bit contradictory in itself. We all know in the biblical history or in the history that there has been an ongoing rift between the Samaritans and the Jews. And so for Jesus to use the story or this parable, uh, to use the Samaritan as a good example is something that may, that may be uh, unacceptable, especially to those people whom he was preaching these very words or this very parable. But as you can see, Jesus is truly driving a very wonderful message here. Because when he talked about the parable of the Good Samaritan, he was telling his disciples that our neighbor or we could be good neighbors uh, to each and every one of us, regardless of their gender, their class, their religion, their origin, 
their uh, religious affiliation, etc., they could still be good in their own way. So innate in us is the divine goodness. We can become good to our brothers and sisters. We can become kind, generous, and helpful, especially to those who are in need. And so the Good Samaritan is a living reminder, a wonderful story to tell us that we can also become a Good Samaritan. That though we may be weak spiritually, though we may be wounded in our own way and suffering because of certain uh, difficulties that we go through in life and struggles in life, we can still do good things to our brothers and sisters. We can still become good Samaritans. And by doing so, we could inspire also other people to become one like the Good Samaritan. So Bethanians, let us try to keep this image uh, going as we go through this week and remind ourselves that the Good Samaritan is a mark of a true disciple of Jesus, that we can also become one like them. God bless us all, Bethanians, until next time.